I'm very happy that we also have reading lectures, and especially by Stella. We know her for a long time, and she's a very impressive person. Has a lot of experience in her art too. Uh, does win a lot of awards, and I'm very happy to have we are here in this, uh, this beautiful exhibition. So I would like to introduce Stella. <coughs> we cannot wait. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And it happened that I'm in Europe. So it, it was easy. I love to be here, I love to be, see all my wonderful friends, and thank you for all coming and being here. Um, after this, now we will hit, see a, a lot of color. <laughs> Before I start my lecture, which will be the title of my lecture, I, I had a lot of thoughts about this because I've never done a lecture. I always done a demo and it's so easy because so I'm deep into painting and I talk and no problem. But lecture, that will be my very first lecture ever. I do. <laughs> so, I so I put a lot of thoughts in it in what to say and how to do it. Uh, and the title of my lecture will be My Quest for Expression in My Art and in My Teaching. Because that is something that I've always think about. What are my preferences? What do I want? Um, why am I painting? What am I painting? Uh, so that will be what I'm talking about. And in order for you to know a little about myself. First, I will introduce myself. My accent comes from Bulgaria. I grew up in Bulgaria, and if you have a problem understanding, too bad, because the worse I try, the worse it gets. <laughs> so that's, you're stuck with my accent. I grew up in Bulgaria. I was an athlete. That is my education, and uh, my education is in teaching. So um, very often I'm asked, uh, what about sport and teaching? I don't believe as a teacher there is any difference. And in, in also in, in doing what I'm doing, the passion, the discipline, the motivation, the enthusiasm that one puts in <coughs> sports is absolutely the same in art. So I love watercolor and that is, uh, it fits my personality. So that is what I do. I would not call myself exactly watercolorist because I, that is not what I believe I want to do. I want to create art and I, I want to be an artist, not watercolorist. I paint, I try pastels and, and oils and, and anything in between, but watercolor is what, what I really, really enjoy doing the most. So that is about me, but in order to see my art so that you will relate to what I'm talking about, please show some of my um, my work. I love color, so it's... It's a really good... No, the telephone did The drugs, the drugs. It's very pale. <coughs>
Just a glance at what you do, and you can notice I really paint a lot and very moody. <laughs> Whatever I feel at the moment, that is what I paint. And uh, I would not call myself a flower painter or marine painter or anything. I paint anything that affects me emotionally at the moment. And um, uh, we, we all admire children when they paint. And for me, the children are the greatest artists. Uh, and, and how do they do such wonderful work that affects us so much? Uh, and I do believe that they are absolutely not intimidated. They, they lack intimidation. They paint something and say, look what I did, and they're so proud of it. Somehow, as we grow and learn, we, um, some along the way, maybe better understanding of the social etiquette, we start becoming very fearful, very intimidated. What would people say? Is it the right thing to do? And we, we lose that, that um, uh, desire to, to express ourselves. And why is this? If you go to the high school and ask, do you, grow, do you draw, do you paint? Uh, they say, oh, no, no, we don't do this, because they, they have, they're intimidated, they don't know, are they doing the right thing? What is the right thing and what will anybody say? Um, the, co the courage to express our emotions in art as well as in life, because I really do not make a big difference between expression in art or in life. Uh, it really affords us a vast realm of communication that are otherwise missing. Yet to express emotions in a responsibility is a responsibility because we affect other people with, with that, just like in life, with our behavior, with the way we talk, the way we dress, we affect everybody around us, and so do we, uh, with art. So the, how, do we how do we express emotions? What tools do we, do, you, do we use? How far do we go? I will be on that quest for the end of my life. Um, I often I ask myself, uh, what, is, what, what do I want to achieve? What are my objectives? What are my, my priorities in paintings? I, I know that I cannot <coughs> compete with nature. I know how insignificant I am, in, absolutely incapable of creating that su in unsurpassable beauty inherent in nature. So, yet I love, I love everything around me. I love nature, I love people, <coughs> and I love, I would want to depict all of the beauty around myself. So how do I do this? <coughs> uh, and I need the clarity in the goals. Uh, I, I'm not going to talk very much about guys. I want it to be a discussion. After I finish with what I would like to say, I would like to know uh, about you and how you feel about it. And now we'll start with you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <One> warning. <laughs> um, to achieve, I, I, I must not simply paint. I uh, not simply paint the things. I want to, to, to uh, uh, convey the feeling that I have towards those, the, the, the objects that I chose to, to paint. And I read something that really, uh, for me, is the best way of, this, the, of describing um, what painting really is for me. Uh, Monet said that, um, he is not interested in the bridge or in the house, but he is interested in what lays between him and the house. Between all this atmosphere, all this aura around us, it's not the object what it is, and that is something that, that Jan just confirmed. It's not the boat or it's the whole ambience of that, the aura. Even when, when we paint a portrait, or a, it's not we don't need exactly all the perfect details, but we need to 
to feel the aura around it. And, and that is when we come, if we so, so very much and often disregard the atmospheric perspective, uh, because we are so involved with the linear perspective, we are so worried to be to look right, to be straight, to all of this. But atmospheric perspective is actually what gives the the emotion to the painting, and there, there it is. You know, when the first glance of the painting, you feel the coldness, you feel the scene, you feel the sky. That is what for me a painting is the communication, and so I. In order to express this, the first thing I must know, not only the emotion that I want to project in my painting, but also the resonance I will evoke in the eye and the heart of the viewer. So for me, painting is just like painting a music. I, I love music. I, I paint because I cannot sing. I will, will be, or I always say I will be opera singer in my next life. So I paint because I cannot sing. But I, for me, a painting is absolutely like singing because every stroke on, on that piece of paper, it's like music. And that is what I wrote on my little cards that I, um, I put on the table. Um, because it's, it's like I get to be the conductor of that, that music and also I, I have to be the, the conductor and the composer. So I have to know what my feelings are, and I, I, I also would like to think what will be the resonance that I will evoke in, in the people who would look at my paintings. So that is why I must be emotionally as well as intellectually involved with, with my, in, my, in, my, in my heart, in my head, see it, feel it, feel it smell it, all of this. I need to, to feel towards my subject, and that is how I, I choose my subject. Uh, I choose my subject by uh, asking myself, why am I painting this painting? What is there? What attracts me to that? So what is the emotional connection that I have with my subject, and what would you like, I like to express? So uh, I, I, that's why usually I paint only from my own photographs or sketches. Something that if I'm, I didn't um, uh, personally um, felt and, and connected emotionally, I don't believe I will be able to express that, that emotion and convey it into my painting. Uh, and then we come to... Um, what, what do I have in my hands in order to do this? And one of the, the most important things are my tools. And we are talking always, we are so um, involved with that. What are the colors that we use? The most important thing is to know. For me, paper, brushes, and paints are the first thing that my first tools. And they are like the like the, the builder of a house. When, when a builder starts to build a house, knows very well what his equipment is used for, the camera or the saw or, and how you do this. So to know your paints in paper and brushes is a very important thing. And in order to know that, all my students know, I play. And I do believe that is the only teacher that can teach you uh, how the colors mix or what the, the brush does or how much the paper um, absorbs the water in the pigment. There is no other way. I can talk 100 hours and explain exactly how the, the, the mixture is or how the paper reacts. There is no way anybody can know until you do not play with that. For me, that, that is the best spent money for that paper and for the paints and brushes because that is the best teacher. And playing is the best way to get into that zone. That is one of my, I brought up four kids and through their childhood and teenage years, I painted. And I had two, three hours a day because the buggers are coming home with one tons of problems. So I had to learn to, to call the muse. Now I want it right now. So what I will do, I will just go and play and smash paper, 
paint on the, on the paper and that is how I mostly learn what my paints do. And another, I get a teacher and it's a funny story that uh, when I started painting, Topper, Christopher Schenk, have you ever heard about him? He's now, a, yeah, I studied with all the old guys. He's now, I don't know, close to 90. And he, he comes and looks at my palette and I have that much color in there. And he says, and what is this? Put a little color in this palette. And I'm, you know, it's too expensive. And he looks at me and says, I will call to you, I will come to your house and look at your shoe closet and see how many shoes you have. <laughs> Gosh, then you should never do that. I love shoes. <laughs> you were flabbergasted. You found your yes, he, 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 yes, that's right. So then I said, hmm, now priorities, shoes or paints? So, if we paint, yes. What, what, shoe, <laughs> yes. what shoe would the rest what, paint? Two to, one to two. <laughs> and uh, um, in, uh, materials are incredibly important. Because if I so very much especially talk with my beginning students, uh, not very experienced students, if you paint with really crappy paints or a paper, you will believe that it's you that is you are the reason that it doesn't really turn a, a well painting. No, it's not. Paper and paints are very important. Very important. And, and of course, we have to try and use different ones to, to find out what works for us, for our styles. I paint with Daniel Smith uh, colors. I'm ambassador of Daniel Smith, just was Jan and Tere and Angela. And I choose to paint with their colors because they have incredible pigment in them. In them. And, and another thing, I come from Bulgaria, I'm very thrifty. <laughs> thrifty. Thrifty. You know what thrifty means? Not stingy, I'm thrifty. This is the difference. <laughs> because a tube of Daniel Smith has so much pigment that a tube I use for, for a year. A lot of the other brands you, you use way more. So that is, I made my account very well in that to know what, what paints to use. In paper, thanks to Jan, a few years ago he told me about, about Sanders Waterford. I love it. Usually I use Arches and Fabriano and I use 100% cotton. And one of the things that I always tell my students, don't worry about the paper. If you play here, it doesn't turn, it's still white there. And then if not, I put it in the bathtub. And I call them my, well, my kind of, my baby's plate in the dirt too much. And stay overnight in the, in the tub in the water and then you kind of gently pat it and talk to it. It becomes beautifully stained paper that you can paint again if it's 100% cotton. So again, it's kind of, it, it actually at the end, it becomes cheaper to use good materials than to, to use um, lesser materials than that. And, and then that is my ways of, of getting into the zone. That is a very important thing because that is where actually creativity happens. It's not when we sit there and worry about what is happening and am I doing well or not. We have to learn and it is a skill to get into the right brain. That is where the creativity happens. Uh, uh, and one of the things that my, how, what are my methods? That is my first method, just to play and to, to get into the zone, get into the mood because I don't have much time. I end with the man who go eight o'clock in the studio, come five o'clock home, and meal is served, and children are done, and everything else, and that is, that is what do as women, we cannot avoid that. We are mothers, we are grandmothers, between the... The potatoes and the soup. Between the, <laughs> we paint between the potatoes and the soup. So we have to learn methods, how quickly to get into that zone where the painting really happens. Um, I want to express my feelings about what I see and what I love. With busy lives, that is what we do. We seldom take time to tr truly learn to see. 
and artists are, are allow every, everyone to see beyond the ordinary. That is what I believe a painting is, because why do I need to paint something so perfectly that everybody knows and already see? I want to show something that, a way that people didn't see that way. That, that will say, oh, I didn't look at poppies that way, you know. But, um, uh, and, and we, we really are uh, given such gifts that actually we take so much for granted. And one of them is light. Without light, there will be no light, there will be no color, there will be nothing without, without light. And the, for us artists, the light is, is, is the feast. Uh, so light is my first and greatest element for, for expressing emotion. Uh, to, yeah, that's right, I already uh, mentioned that we are so much more concerned about linear uh, perspective than atmospheric perspective. And I light, I learned to know a lot of the shadows and a lot of ways of light. There is the local light that we, local color, the light produces the color. Without light, there is no color. So there is, is local color uh, in light. There is the gradation from light to dark. There is the, the local color in shade. There we have the reflection light in the shade. And then we have dark under the object, and we have the cast shadows. For me, the, the reflected light is the most, most emotional one. And that is what we, we, we all of this here, you know, that we don't well know that ice is white. But why is it the blue there? Because that is the water is reflecting in, into, the, into the, the sky, everything. And talking about white, white absorbs the most of light because whatever is surrounded, white absorbs. And, and that is for me the, the beauty of, of light, that there, there is, is light. Um, I, I revel in the light that springs from every object to, to affect the surfaces around it. Up and down, left and right, that hides under the eaves of the roof or the trunk of the, of the um, trees or the, the yellow blouse of a, of a girl walking on the street. That is the most beautiful thing to express, to express the light and how light changes. And that is what attracts me a lot. I love color, I wear, and I recently, I don't know, I'm gray, kind of. <laughs> I usually wear a lot of, of, of color. But, but that is what, for me, that attraction. And, and to seeing and understanding light is vital for my work. And I think it's, I believe that is, light is the key of expressing the emotion. And that is, of course, light is responsible for the atmospheric perspective, which is nothing else but, but, but the diffused light which is in the air, because all of this around us is not emptiness. You know, when we talk about atmospheric perspective, what is it? It's, it's all this diffused light that is in between the moisture, the, the dust, and all the particles on, on the air. So all of this is heavy with stuff. So that is, that is where, where that reflected light comes from, this diffused light from the, the moisture in, in, in the air. And, and then the light, like I said, is not one of the very most uh, important, important things for, for my quest for expression. But then the other knowledge that I draw is, is the knowledge of the seven elements and the seven designs. And, uh, um, um, uh, principles of design, and that is something that we we all so many people says, oh, I'm not creative. Oh, I cannot do this. That is not true. We are all creative. We wake up in the morning and we choose what to to wear. This is creativity. You're putting the colors together. You're looking how what goes with well. You you're making a nice table. You, you're putting, you're uh, arranging your house and hanging your paintings and putting colors together. 
So it, it's really, nobody ever on earth should think that it's not creative. I do believe creativity we do from morning to evening. And, and so um, for me, um, really talking about the seven elements is a very important thing. And I, I know that that knowledge is for me very important because I'm not painting things. I am painting a rectangular or a square or whatever the form of this paper is. The painting is not the boat, it's not the, the eyes, it's not the bird. This is the painting. So in order to create this painting, I have to have knowledge about design. How do I design this piece of paper? And everybody works admiring Jan's um, uh, sketchbooks because they are so beautifully designed. They are so simple. It's a pleasure to, to look at them because when, what I want is for the viewer to come, look at my painting, come closer, want to come closer to see it, and from one end to the painting to go everywhere and to go more and more, and the more it looks at my painting, to more to want it and to more to like it. And that is what the goal of all of us is for someone to like the painting and to, would like to, to look at it forever. So that is, in the seven elements of line, value, color, size, shape, direction and, te and texture. And since I, my life is very complicated, I live in many parts of the world and children and grandchildren, I like to simplify things. So I, uh, line in direction, I marry them. We, I can never put a, a line or anything and not think of what am I showing? Where is this line going? Why am I putting it where am I putting? And then uh, those two elements, I marry them. Then size and shape. I can never put a, a shape without thinking of, of size because I like the variety of the sizes. And in painting, very often we call them uh, big bear, papa bear, mama bear, baby bear. We have to have the variety of that. And variety is one of the principles of design. Then value. Value is very important for me. Even color is not important. I love color, I paint it. Uh, even the color is not important. We are so uh, interested in what color it is. It doesn't matter. Until the values are right. You can use any color you like, except to, except to make it kind of believable. But you can make the really totally out of, you know, whatever color you like to use. If the values work, painting is good. And, and then color. Color for me is I really do not teach much about color because I do believe we all have our um, preferences in color. But what is very important for me is the temperature. That is again one of the things that I make the viewer of my painting go from place to place, changing. Because we react on, on cold. The cooler colors make us feel cold, warmer colors make us go in. So all of this, I, I call them steps in my paintings. Um, and uh, texture, Texture is an, an, another variety that I will use in my values or in my shapes and in my light. But knowing the seven elements is for me essential. And that is, I teach a lot in my workshops about the seven elements. Because to, to, to design this piece of paper, it's a very important thing. And if it's not well designed, you feel like you have to like a little like that because it's, something is out of balance and we have that intuition many many times i i paint the painting and because i paint in many places in my painting i look and i said no i need to balance here and there in order to the, the design to be to be well uh in the the principles the seven uh, principle of, of design, the, the unity, dominance, repetition, variety, balance, harmony, gradation, contrast, all of these things, if I know how to use my seven elements, I don't need to need the principles to think about it, because by using 
in knowing the seven elements, I already done well with, with the, the uh, principles. But one principle is very important for me, and that is unity. I like my painting to be united from the very beginning, so I do a lot of connections. My students always uh, tease me about connect, 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 with, they imitate my accent because connection is very important for me from the beginning. Otherwise, it's very hard for me when I establish an all hard edges and if I paint separately, then it's hard to unite the painting of, of the very end. And unity is one one of the principles that I regard very highly, and I, I work with that from the very beginning. Um, and like I said, my objection and my my goal is uh, someone to like my painting. That is what we paint: something to show, some emotional connection. So, and, and sorry, I, Stella. Yes. How are your emotions? Strong? Weak? No, you never know. <laughs> but are they like quiet or strong? You know, Stella, it's like this. Ah, because I wanted to show this. Look. Yeah. What do you think of this? Imagine this in a big size. Yeah. It hits you, no? It's a full sheet, yes. Yeah. yeah, imagine. Yeah. Thank, you. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yes, my emotions are, you should ask my kids about it. <laughs> they know pretty well about yes, my emotions. They know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the, that is what I. That is how I feel about my paintings. That is how I created my paintings, and that is the the quest. That I will always work on that. I I never know uh, really um, where am I going with with that. And but the most important thing is to. Um, to create an emotional connection with, with the viewer. And I always laugh because um, uh, I tell my students, so uh, whoever does not like your paintings cannot be your friend. And, the, and that is really the truth. Because, because isn't it, I mean, yeah, isn't it? Because if, if they don't like your painting, that means that they didn't feel you. Because I put my heart there like it or not this is what i've done and if somebody feels what i felt he can be my friend and usually i'm friends with all my people who <laughs> my paintings through the years so. <laughs> let me show a couple is that okay yes that's okay please yeah yeah you you can i can you I, connect with that see it's so so alive no Talking, people are talking. Thank you. Talking, talking about atmosphere. Yes. You you feel you feel the inside. passion. Scene. Yeah. We are feeling the passion for your subject. Exactly. And that's and that, thank you. Yeah. That is everything that I yes. like. To, yeah, that is the casual one. That was I had a very big exhibit in in the city I was born in Bulgaria in Varna for my seventeenth birthday. So the, the and, and these cattle, trees. Cattle Wouldn't work. you like to walk in these trees? Yes. <laughs> Huh? That is the wood that the, the forest that starts from my house in Bulgaria. And the boats, I don't know, you have so many boats. Yeah, boats. Yeah, Let me look for a boat. Yes. She's a specialist in Very boats. Good. Look, on the boat. And I've been here, no? Have I been here? Where the where the boats are? And John Cogley has this painting. Oh. No, the other oh, place. The place. Oh, the place, this is the Isle of Skye. Okay. And that was really amazing. I never expected in Sky, in Isle of Sky, to have colors like this. And I went to the harbor, and those colors were exploding. And I couldn't believe why. And it makes so much sense. They said because of the fog. So then they want to see the the, the boats as as long as possible in the fog. So they paint them this incredibly strong colors. This is China. Everywhere. You are able to find color even when there is no color. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I look for color. I, I like color. So I, that is what I 
can say about my that is my first lecture in my my life. So I would like to I would like to hear what your quest for expression is, how you feel about your painting, and I I want Carlson's to start with seriously. What, what, what is it? Because your paintings are exactly that. Your paintings yeah. are so loose and so emotional and colorful. Yes. So. Let me first say I 100% or more agree with your lecture. So it's it's absolutely what I feel about art, not not only about watercolor art because you do art yes. about any art. Yeah. And uh, so I came to watercolor pretty late. I was almost 50 when I started, and um, I had a career as a graphic art artist for. In, in, in the scene from now, I would say I was, I have been a graphic prostitute for half of my life, working for companies <laughs> and everything. And when, when I came to watercolor, I thought I'm just too old to trying to play like Alvaro Castelli or like Stella Canfi or like Young Mir. And you cannot do this. All, all, all of you. So I, I just decided. Um, I don't care about any rules, I just try to bring my feeling on the paper. And making mistakes is the best teacher, I think. Well, yeah. well, watercolor is a very interesting medium and technique. It's okay, you, you need to, uh, to do the good skills. But that's not enough. No. If you paint with your soul, with your heart, what you put on your work, people will feel it. Yeah. So yeah. it's like conductor for a big orchestra. If the conductor is nervous or he is not feeling good, then the orchestra reacts and the audience hear the emotions of the conductor. And in art it's exactly the same. It's absolutely. Yeah. And so it's always in life. You were talking about music. I, I have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really lucky because I can do my own music too. Tomorrow, if you come to my demo, yeah, you, you, you will hear and see me painting. And for me, it goes together because nowadays my painting is uh, influencing the way I make music, and it's the other way around. And for me, it goes. Hand in hand. Absolutely. Uh, it goes so far that I, when I try to paint a picture, I get rid of any reference photos around. Because when I do the painting, I don't want to think about the subject. I want just to be inside the painting process. And the music helps extremely. Of course, I have to know the subject, and so I can make sketches before. But this is for me the creative process. What would you say about you, please? I disagree completely with you. <laughs> <laughs> More than 100% of it. <laughs> yes. no. uh, we are very similar in the fact that we are emotional painters. No? I personally, I, I cannot, it's very difficult for me to to paint exactly what I see in a very realistic manner. Because I like to paint how I see it, how what the subject it makes me feel. And that's very much what you do. And you're not uh, confined to certain lines. You make a design, but then you're not confined because if you want to change that, you want to go over the line, that's not a problem. And that's what, um, because it's you inside that, yes. that uh, yeah. expression. And that's what we see and what we feel when we see your paintings. And that is my objective as well, to connect with the viewer in, in, in such a way. They yeah. think that maybe I'm more abstract than, than you, yeah. but it's the same principle, same principle. And, I mean, and, and compositions, even in abstract, is so important because That's it's not nothing. just uh, two lines. No, it has to have a structure. Which is happening increasingly a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. the composition in abstract is more difficult than in yeah. figurative. It's so, but it has beyond. to have the balance, the Absolutely. values, and everything. So, thank you for enlightening us. <laughs> and sharing your art with us. I'm so happy, dear Stella, that I invited you.
even when it's you, the first time in your life, it will open a new world for you. <laughs> have, I'd like to. And having been a former therapist, I can make the conclusion it's a new way to learn from you. And all people reacted very, very, very good. So we're very grateful to have uh, listened to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.